Hello, everybody. My name is Brandon Hopkins. Today, I am going to be your developer advocate. And what we're going to be doing is setting up a simple website with Micro Weber. This right here is their website. What it is basically is a no code platform that allows you to easily build beautiful websites. You can kind of see here the little demonstration. It's a lot of drag and drop. They have a live editor, so you can actually edit directly on the pages if you'd like to. And you can host a lot of different things through it, whether that be a blog, a store, your standard kind of corporate website for your business, whatever you really need. Here we have the design concept, more examples of just clicking and editing, and some examples of some of the clients that you that they expect to actually be using this software. And a really cool thing is, this is incredibly easy to set up over here on your very own Linode. This right here is the guide for actually setting this up using their marketplace application, which is what we're gonna be doing. This makes it really nice, super easy, does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. We don't really need to actually mess with the terminal or anything at all using it this way. However, if you do end up wanting like an SSL certificate, which you're going to want, uh, you will need to dabble in that a little bit later. This will be linked down below. We have some of the configuration options here. There's really not much and the setup is super simple. If we go over here to the Akamai Cloud Manager, you just click create, you create your new Linode, and you go into marketplace, I searched for micro and micro brewer is here. So we have our image, just gonna go with the latest version or the latest available version of Ubuntu here. For the region, this is where the actual server is going to be located. So it's recommended to pick a region that is either close to your target audience or close to yourself. So for me, I'm gonna go with US West and here are the plans. Now, especially for just starting out and building this, you're not really gonna need a lot. So we're gonna go with the shared CPU, nanode one gig plan. As your site expands, you have more users and whatnot, you can upgrade this in the future very easily. And if you want to try this out for what is essentially free, you can get a $100 60 day credit by using the link down below. So with that, we have the Nanode one gig. We have our label here. You could add a label if you'd like to. I'm gonna get rid of it or get rid of the tag. Label micro Weber US West is going to be fine. Root password, you're going to want to remember this. Make it super strong, complicated, and secure. You'll want that a little bit later if you ever want to dive into the actual terminal and actually interact with the server, set up SSL certs, things like that. And really, that is about it when it comes to setting up the Linode. So we just need to click Create Linode here, and we can see it's being created, it's provisioning. Now, while it does all this, you saw that there was no inputs for actually setting up our domain name or anything like that. So we're gonna need to set an A record manually. And to do that, another thing really easy, we have our IP address here. I'm just gonna give that a copy. And for this, I'm gonna be using the domain manager here on Akamai. You can see I have a couple domains set up through this. If you don't have your domain on here, you could do this through your registrar or uh, use your registrar to host all the records and everything on here if you'd like to. Again, there's a tons of links resources, so we'll link to those down below. But basically, no matter where you are, you're gonna to want to go into your A records. You can see here I have a done quite a bit of testing using this specific uh, domain name here. But basically, easy process. We're just going to add an A record. We're going to paste in that IP address we copied. Oh, we're going to paste it in right here. My apologies. The host name is going to be your actual uh, subdomain or domain. If I wanted this to not have a subdomain, I would just do the at symbol for root. Or since I do want this to have a subdomain, I'm just going to call our little test website blog for now. So then it will be blog at domain.com or whatever your domain happens to be. So I'm gonna click save. And generally this is pretty quick. It theoretically can take up to like a day, but it's usually like five minutes or so. So now that we've done that, let's go back over to our Linodes here. This is the one we just set up. And if we go over and launch the Lish console, what this is is kind of a terminal emulator in which you can see what it is doing live. So you can see right now it's running updates. It's doing, like I said earlier, a lot of the heavy lifting for us by actually installing all the packages and everything it needs. So basically we're gonna wait real quick until we actually see a login prompt and that's when we're gonna know it's ready for us to start interacting with it. Right here we could see build complete so it should be prompting us any second now. And we have our login. So now if I close this out real quick and let's go to that domain we set up. So let's jump over here and go to blog.hopkey.net, enter, and here we go. So this is the installation so you can see we our install is ready to go. The A record has worked perfectly fine, so we're able to use that domain. And now I do recommend just kind of keeping most of this at default. Obviously, you could change your theme if you would like to. They come with the three, so you can either do the shop mag, new world, 
or bootstrap which honestly for my design preference bootstrap is looking pretty good and it's nice you take your cursor off you put it back on it gives you a nice preview of what you are going to be dealing with you have the option to import default content if you would like to so it kind of fills in and creates a bunch of uh, web pages store items and things like that for you so you kind of have a good idea of how to build around it or how to replace it with your own content uh, right here admin information we're just going to go with brandon i'm going to put in my uh, business email address here and then give ourselves a password just like that you can do update notifications there are an advanced or there is a single advanced option if you want to change the admin url this is really good if you don't want people finding your admin page you could do a bunch of random characters there that you're going to remember so then people just don't go to your website forward slash admin but for now i'm just going to keep it how it is so let's click install it's going to run through the process here real quick and it's going to jump us in to our dashboard there it goes so here we go now it looks pretty good so we have our statistics we have latest comments recent orders on our dashboard it just gives us a quick overview of what is actually going on on our website and then over here on the sidebar we have all the different things we can access we have our main website tab shop modules marketplace settings users and we can log out from here now before i get too far ahead of myself let's go and look at our website so there's a button right here called website if we click on that it will take us to our website this is under the shop page but if i go over here to home you can see what that looks like and just to kind of show you the live editing so right here this button is the live edit button if i go ahead and give that a click it will open up this so we have some options over here and the cool thing is right here we have a big custom what is that jumbotron if i'm to click on this directly i can then edit it so i can say something like welcome to our site and we are good to go if i click on this little element this is a button you can see i have additional options so i can edit that element it'll bring up a pop-up with a lot of different things that we can do here button we can have the action go to link we have the link here so if i want to edit this link for example and let's do https linode.com okay and to go down we have some other options such as shadow some actual size color and all that I'm going to go ahead and close this out for now, click save. And now this example button will take us to the Linode website. So that's just an example of editing elements and how easy it is to just dive in there and start making some changes. And of course, over here, we have some extra layout options. So we have text blocks and it's real easy just to go to these layouts and kind of drag and drop specific elements. So like content, for example, it's just a bunch of pre-built things that you see on websites that look fairly decent so for example right here if i'm to drag and drop this in i can just pop it in and then there we go so it's a whole new element and then from there i could replace the picture replace all this text and make a pretty solid looking website so from there i could click save and then go over here let's a view website so now this is our website without being in edit mode you can see right here this button is going to take me to linode and this is what i just added really easy to manipulate and change things around now, if I do jump back into live editing here, I can go right here to modules. These are those specific elements, such as the button. If you don't want to use like predefined pre layouts, you can add in a bunch of your own stuff. We have tabs, breadcrumbs, uh, tabs, for example, if I'm to drag and drop that in, you can see I have tab content and it's default. So it's not going to have a lot of options, but I could click edit. And just like with the button, it's going to bring up this dialogue where I can add new, you can see content one, click that and I could manipulate and change this however I would like to. And then of course, if we go over here, we have template settings. So we have some font settings here. And if I go right here, we have our visual editor. So this is where you, you could actually change some of the uh, topography, spacing and whatnot. So if I click on the specific elements, it will access or give me the availability to do all these types of edits, super cool. So with that, let's go back to admin. That's a brief overview of our live editor here. Cool. Put us right onto the web page tab of our uh, admin dashboard. So you can see some of the stuff we can do in here. We have edit pages. If I go back into page, this is a list of all the pages we have available to us. And it's real easy to edit, delete, go into live editing through here. Of course, we could add a page and give a page title. So let's say theoretically, I wanted a contact page. We have our layout here so you can inherit. It looks like we already have a contact us page, but that's okay. This is just an example. We have add to navigation here. You can select your apparent or your parent page. And here you could add pictures, custom fields, some SEO settings. So let's save this real quick. And then if we were to jump into live edit, so let's hit uh, cancel live edit. So this is our new contact page. And then all I would do is go over here to layouts, for example, 
and I can search. So if I search for contact, there's nothing. But if I go over here to modules and I can see a contact form here, so I can drag and drop that in. And there we go. And then I could edit it. I could add a map or address, do whatever I needed to do. So it is truly easy to go ahead and add these pages and customize your website exactly how you need to. And of course, we have posts for blog posts, categories, and products. If you plan on selling things here, just kind of filled in some random stuff for us. But even editing like project or product pages, for example, is going to be kind of the same process. You can use Live Editor. This is the kind of standard looking editor, which gives you kind of a text field box, product name, things like that. If I'm to jump over to website, for example, and click edit directly on here instead of live edit. And then from there, we have modules. You kind of saw modules are just the individual components. You can reload. You can add new modules through here from the marketplace. And you could see some of the specific ones. So, for example, we were manipulating the contact form earlier. So if I go over here to contact form and I'm to give it a click, you can see it's going to open up the settings for that specific thing. So for that contact form, this is where my messages will show up. We have global settings here as well as email integrations if that's something you want to set up. And that's just an example of one module. Now, if we go over to Marketplace here, this is where you can add new things such as templates. Now, most of these templates or themes are going to be premium. So do note that they are pretty cheap, though, if I click a Let's say this bamboo one, if I click install, oh, it looks like this one's not a, a premium one. So it's not going to be all of them that are a premium. If we scroll down a little bit, it's probably going to start getting into premium territory. So home restoration, if I click install on this one, there we go. Now it's going to ask for a license key. If we click on get license key, you can see they're about $5 or you can pay monthly whatever floats your boat. And of course, it's not just themes. Like I mentioned, you can grab modules too. So we have modules and these are some of the ones that are available that are not installed by default. And here is where updates are going to be handled. So we have the standalone updater. If I wanted to, I could click on update, confirm that and we'd be good to go, but I don't really need to update at the moment. And then we have settings. Now this is where obviously you're going to change and manipulate a lot of the different things on your website. We have general settings email settings, file settings, and a whole lot more. We have specific settings for shop because that is kind of a major secondary component to micro Weber. Your privacy policy. If I jump into just general, for example, this is going to be some SEO settings. So how it's going to show up on Google. We have some general settings, social media networks, online shop. It's cool because it's an all in one platform essentially. So you're not really going to, it's not like WordPress where it's kind of bare bones and you're going to need to add a bunch of different plugins and whatnot to add more functionality to it. A lot of the basic things you'd expect are already kind of built into it, even up to like file management. For example, if I go to files, you can see our kind of gallery of everything we have uploaded. And then if I go to something, for example, so we have this photo here, if I click on options, I got to download or copy the specific URL. Now that I have the URL copied, I can get that direct link to the picture and you can use that basically anywhere you'd like to. And then of course we have users so you can add more users and it's pretty typical first, last name, password, email, phone, things like that it does have two factor authentication options. If you'd like to enable that. And really that is our brief rundown of micro Weber, how to get it set up again. Once you get this actually published and whatnot, you're going to want a certificate for this. I'll leave a link down below to kind of show you how to set up Nginx and reverse proxy that as unfortunately we are not going to have time in this video. With all that, this is a wonderful channel. We upload a whole bunch of cloud computing content, tutorials, guides, programming videos, a bunch of different stuff. It's definitely worth a subscribe. If you're into Linux servers, hosting online web services, it's a wonderful resource. So do make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. And once again, if you are interested in that $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try this out today, there will be a link down below. And again, with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.